the Soviet Union made it their goal to dominate space. This would lead to the Soviet officials making last minute decisions that would give them a head start in their space race. However, those who have researched the Soviet space program have said they haven't been entirely honest with us, and that many cosmonauts would go on to lose their lives in the battle of the space race. The rivalry between the Soviet Union and the United States is well documented. Both wanted to have the bragging rights to see who was first in space. It's not just cosmonauts that shrouded in mystery. Since the space race, the Russians have sent various probes into space, and one of these was the Phobos 2 mission, which was launched on the 12th of July 1988. The probe was created with the sole purpose of travelling to Mars's two moons Phobos. The probe made the 254.3 million kilometer, or 1.5 million mile journey to Mars. It arrived on the 30th of January 1989, but lost communication. Before it did, however, it sent back a few mysterious photographs, some of which are used by believers to suggest that the probe may have encountered something otherworldly. One of the photographs that was sent back showed a huge cigar or disc-looking craft, some of which say that the probe may have encountered an unidentified flying object. As mentioned, the official NASA explanation was that the probe experienced a malfunction on board, but according to some higher up officials, this isn't what actually happened, and this is where things get interesting. In 1991, six former US Army remote viewers were brought in by Russian officials to help identify what actually went wrong with the probe. The thing is, this may sound like something that's made up, but it isn't. In fact, back in the early 1970s, it was said that the Soviet Union had begun spending millions each year on the study of psychic abilities and remote viewing, the ability to see locations far away via astral projection, on a project known as psychotronic research. In fear that the Soviet Union had learned of a new form of spiritual technology, the United States quickly funded and established Project Stargate, of which had the express purpose to also study the remote viewing phenomenon and use psychic soldiers as a method of retrieving information of captured prisoners of war, high value targets and preventable attacks. Research into remote viewing would begin back in 1972 at the Stanford Research Institute located out of Mellon Park in the state of California. The lead researchers Russell Targ and Harrod Puthoff required a minimum accuracy of greater than 65% success before an individual could be accepted into the research study, which claims that many of the participants far exceeded this percentage, but were not always 100% accurate with their guesses. Shortly after the project began, the team was able to locate a lost Soviet spy plane in 1976 by psychic participant Rosemary Smith as well as additional claims of recovered POVs and high-value targets over the years. Back in 1991, the remote viewers who were taken on to find the truth about what happened to the probe gave a report called Enigma Penetration. The report then went on to detail that the Soviet Phobos II spacecraft did in fact encounter a UFO, and that this craft had raised up from the Martian surface. The probe was able to quickly snap a photograph of the ominous looking craft, before everything was shut off. Those in the remote viewing program said the large craft had moved towards the probe as if inspecting it, but shortly after shot a particle beam device at the probe, which in turn caused it to malfunction. What's odd is that various remote viewers have come forward over the years and talked about similar instances, saying that anything we send into Earth is closely examined by non-human entities. The idea of there being alien life and UFOs out there has been the subject of much ridicule, but when you research the phenomenon you will find some high-ranking officials that have come forward and said we need to take sightings more seriously. In fact, one of these individuals was that of Lord Admiral Hill Norton, former Chief of Defence Staff Five Star Admiral of the Royal Navy, and chairman of the NATO military committee. He said the following, There is a serious possibility that we're being visited, and have been visited for many years by people from outer space, from other civilizations. 
this should be the subject of rigorous scientific investigation, and not the subject of rubbishing by tabloid newspapers. End quote. He also went on to say the following about the famous Rendlesham Forest event, which has gone down in history as being the UK's most compelling UFO incident, that wasn't just witnessed by military personnel, but also had information go missing shortly before investigations started to take place. When asked his opinion on the matter, he said the following. There are only two conceivable explanations. Either a UFO landed there causing the damage, or the United States Air Force Deputy Base Commander Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt, and several hundred of his men were hallucinating. End quote. Another interesting project was that of the Gateway Experience. Declassified back in 2003, a government document between an independent research and the United States Army commander showed undeniable proof of a strange CIA experiment, known as the Gateway Process Experience, that was created to enhance the brain of an individual in the effort to give them mental superpowers that would help them achieve a higher mental capability than is capable for the average person. The document then ends with the researchers saying that the gateway process experience should be provided to all members of the organisation for heightened mental ability. Although the document fails to elaborate on the finding, the memo then states the training could open up members of the gateway process to be attacked by intelligent energy beings if the boundaries of time and space are continually surpassed. Stating in quotes, Subjects must be intellectually prepared to react to possible encounters with intelligent non-corporal energy forms when time-space boundaries are exceeded. With additional statements that perhaps practical use of the gateway process experience could be used to gather information from such entities and the universal consciousness. Space is a vast and largely unexplored place. Advancing technology and the development of our scientific understanding has helped us to find out more about what lies beyond our planet and has opened up the door to future exploration. Its multitude has allowed for many aspects to go unknown since humans first left Earth and have experienced life outside of our planet. Something to note though is that not every discovery made by NASA and other space agencies are understood. Sometimes these discoveries confuse even the best scientists. Back in 1997, a mysterious plume was detected by the Hubble Space Telescope coming from Mars. The European Space Agency said the following on their website. Plumes seen reaching high above the surface of Mars are causing a stir among scientists. Going on to say the following. On two separate occasions in March and April 2012, Amateur astronomers reported plume-like features developing on the planet. The plumes were seen rising to altitudes of over 250 kilometers above the same region of Mars on both occasions. By comparison, similar features seen in the past have not exceeded 100 kilometers. At around 250 kilometers, the division between the atmosphere and outer space is very thin so the reported plumes are extremely unexpected. The features developed in less than 10 hours, covering an area of up to 1,000 to 500 kilometers, and remain visible for around 10 days, changing their structure from day to day. None of the spacecraft orbiting Mars saw the features because of their viewing geometries and illumination conditions at the time. However, checking archived Hubble Space Telescope images between 1995 and 1999 and databases of amateur images spanning 2001 to 2014 revealed occasional clouds at the limb of Mars, usually up to 100 kilometers in altitude. But one set of Hubble images from the 17th of May 1997 revealed an abnormally high plume, similar to that spotted by the amateur researchers in 2012. Scientists are now working on determining the nature and course of the plumes by using the Hubble data in combination with the images taken by amateurs. One idea we've discussed is that the features are caused by a reflective cloud of water ice, carbon dioxide ice or dust particles, 
but this would require exceptional deviations from standard atmospheric circulation models to explain cloud formations at such high altitudes. Another idea is that they're relative to an aurora emission, and indeed auroras have been previously observed at these locations, linked to a known region on the surface where there is a large anomaly in the crustal magnetic field. The jury is still out on the nature of these curious high-altitude Martian plumes. NASA went on to say the following. There's also other interesting features that appear in this image. The northwestern portions of the planet are enveloped in unusually thick water ice clouds, similar to cirrus clouds on Earth. Some clouds extend as far as lunar planum, the slightly darker region about halfway from the center to the left side of the map. The dark spot near the terminator boundary between day and night, at around 9am in the June 27th planet image, is a 27 km high volcano, protruding through the clouds. The remnant North Polar Camp, composed of water ice is at the top of the May and June images, and a bluish South Polar Hood, composed of water ice clouds is seen along the southern edge. Because the planet's axis is tipped towards us during this season, we cannot see this South Polar Camp, which is in winter darkness. This isn't the only mysterious discovery made on Mars. The prospect of life on Mars has long been a topic of debate. Our second mystery investigates known organic material found on Mars, and where it may have come from. After sending the Curiosity rover to seek answers about this planet, NASA has found evidence from rocks on Mars that leads scientists to believe that ancient life could have been supported there. Although news of the evidence cannot confirm life on Mars yet, it provides us with more information regarding the planet's history. This new discovery takes the form of two unusual intricacies, the first one being what is known as organic molecules. Organic molecules consist of many elements including carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Whilst these elements are often associated with life, organic molecules aren't unquestionably signs of life. They can be created through non-biological processes, and therefore cannot currently provide evidence of life on Mars. The Curiosity rover was still able to drill material from mudstone, which are a type of sedimentary rock. They took samples of the mudstone originating billions of years ago, from a specific site in the Gale Crater. After careful examination, some particles were found to contain sulphur, which could have been a preserving factor. Further evaluation of the material resulted in the findings of astonishing levels of organic carbon concentrations. This level of carbon can be closely related to the levels found in Martian meteorites, and much greater than what would have been found on the surface of Mars. Chlorine was also found within the rocks in 2013, alluding to ancient debris. These findings are a step in the right direction and continue to motivate scientists to dig deeper and delve into their curiosity. This only further encouraged the scientific community to search for answers and evidence of life. The second discovery consists of a pattern found in the release of methane on Mars over the years. Observing seasonal variations in the methane on Mars could conceivably point to ancient human life. In one study, scientists argue this possibility after studying the peak in warmer months and drop off in the cooler months each year over the course of six years. The duration of this pattern leads us to question why this methane is present and if it could point to life. With NASA's plans to further explore this planet in the future, who's to say this mystery will remain unsolved? So what do you make of these space discoveries? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.